Sacrifice. I'm the Frank Fryer. Let's get frank about it. Thank you all for your time today, my brothers and sisters. If you like what I'm doing here, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and click that little bell icon. And make sure that you don't miss out on anything new that I put up here on this channel. And also make sure, with all the things happening here on YouTube, that you're following me on social media. My Twitter handle is at CarmeliteNick. And my Facebook page is The Real Frank Fryer. Follow these two things so you never miss out on all the different things I'm doing here on YouTube and my other social media platforms. Thank you very much. Have a good day. So, one of the important aspects to the Carmelite rule is the, is the call to daily communion, to the daily celebration of the Eucharist in which we honor, celebrate, and remember the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And He nourishes us with His very living presence, He made known to us through the gift of the Eucharist. Now. Corpus Christi is about three weeks away and I wanted to do a couple of videos on the Eucharist since this is such a foundational and important aspect to the Carmelite charism. You know, the liturgy has always been an important aspect to our lives as Carmelite friars from the beginning since that part of the rule calls us to daily communion and the liturgy of the hours. Now, the idea of sacrifice might seem a little old-fashioned. I know the time after Trent that was... Um, a real important aspect and view of the Eucharist and then post Vatican II ideas of communion and and just the word Eucharist really came out in a strong way but we need a totality of these things we need all these ideas to help us to begin just to approach the great blessing and gift that is the Eucharist so today I just want to talk a little bit about sacrifice and we still use this sacrificial language in the liturgy and what do I mean by that well in the part of the liturgy, right before the Eucharistic prayer, before the uh, priest begins to recall and speaks in persona Christi the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we hear, after the preparation of the gifts, this. The priest says, Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And then the people respond, May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. So we see this language of sacrifice is still in the liturgy. And when we recall and we celebrate the Lord's gift of sacrifice at the Eucharist, it's not just sort of a recollection like, you know, we have a cross before us and we remember aspects of the crucifixion. No, no, no. The intention that he had at the Last Supper and on the cross is being still shown forward through the Mass, through what the priest is doing up on the altar, for lack of a better word. You know, when we talk about remembering the Lord's death on the cross, there's a specific word, uh, an amnesis. And it's an important word because it's just not a word about remembering, it's, it's remembering but bringing something to the present. Because we remember the, the, the death and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ wasn't just done in His human flesh, but also by His divinity. So, this moment of the crucifixion is in a way timeless. So, when we celebrate the Mass, it's not that we're sort of re-crucifying the Lord. We are, in fact, by the grace of God, being brought to that moment on the cross. Brought to His suffering moments on the cross. And then we get to experience His resurrection, as the Apostles did. So when we confront this word sacrifice, and the reason I wanted to make this video today is because we are called to be like Christ. We are called to imitate Christ. So that means we must be able to sacrifice like Christ. And the more we go to communion, the more we go to the Eucharist, the more we go to Mass, we become more deeply configured to this ability of sacrifice, being able to sacrifice as Jesus Christ did for us us on the cross you know his intention is of the utmost importance so as he made known his intention in his death and the breaking of the bread which was fully manifested on the cross our hearts are called to be converted to that intention of sacrifice so when the moments come up in our life that we are called to sacrifice maybe our own desires and our own wants and our own things we think that will be best for us we can give them over to the lord
to his moment on the cross, as Paul tells us in first in Colossians 1.24, I complete what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ for the sake of his body, the church. So when I maybe want to do a certain thing, but yet I know the Lord is calling me to a deeper way, I can offer that up as a means of sacrifice in honor, glory, and praise of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who has shown me, who has taught me, who has strengthened me to give sacrifice as he himself did on the cross. That's why we can't shun away from this word, but we need to embrace this word. You know, I do a lot of vocational work for the province, and one of the things I see regularly throughout my work with the vocation office is this real struggle with young men being able to make a sacrifice, to give up times of their life in order to pursue more deeply the vocational call that they believe and feel with inside themselves that the Lord is calling them to. You know, so as we Carmelites try to manifest this call of our rule to daily communion, to becoming more and more conformed to Jesus Christ through our daily prayer, we know that we must be able to give of ourselves fully as Christ did, being able to sacrifice ourselves for the sake of the presence of Jesus Christ in the world. And this may not necessarily be martyrdom. You know, we don't seek it out. If it comes, we are open to embrace it. But, you know, those little comforts in our life, we got to be able to give it up. Those little points of our pride, got to give it up. You know, maybe these good little things that we have, you know, these little gifts in our lives, being able to give it up to go to a deeper way. This is one of the things that Carmelite rule and Carmelite um, charism in our history points to that when we go deeper into the life of prayer, we are called to give up those little moments of consolation that the Lord has given us early on in the life of prayer so we can become more joined with him in a deeper, more profound and more intimate way. And what's more intimate than the language of sacrifice? Now, is this an exhaustive treatise on this idea of sacrifice in the Eucharist? No, this is just an entry point. Bishop Robert Barron has a great book on the Eucharist I highly recommend. You go to the Catechism, there's great paragraphs of reflection on this topic within them. There's a multitude of different saints that you can go to. There is no human way that we can exhaust the total mystery of the Eucharist. We're called to allow ourselves to be shifted to different angles, to become more open to the presence that is being offered to us through the great mystery of the Eucharist, which is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he taught us during his earthly ministry that true love comes from being able to sacrifice, not just for someone you love, but even for your enemies, which he showed us in the penultimate way through the cross, which is made known to us this moment of great self-offering in obedience to the Father and out of love for his brothers and sisters here on earth through the Eucharist. So by just taking a moment to reflecting upon the idea of sacrifice and what does it mean for the Lord to have sacrificed himself and what does it mean for us to be like the Lord and being open to those moments of sacrifice in our life, we grow in intimacy with the Lord, which the Feast of Corpus Christi is always inviting us into. So as we begin to prepare ourselves for that, becoming more open to the living presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, emboldened and strengthened by the Holy Spirit, because Pentecost is coming too, my brothers and sisters, we have to not be afraid of those moments of sacrifice that our Lord calls us to. So when we are at the Mass, journeying with the priest, remembering our Lord's sacrifice, so we can be brought to that very moment of earthly time, all those years ago, we can become to be transformed in the presence of our Lord so we can be like him. So as Paul teaches us in Galatians chapter 2, it's no longer I, but Christ who lives in me. His words are meant to be our words also, my brothers and sisters, and that only happens when we are able to sacrifice our I for the sake of his thou. Thank you very much for your time today, my brothers and sisters. Know that I'm with you. Know that I'm praying for you. And may God continue to bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks again for your time today, my brothers and sisters. Any second that you spend engaging with my social media um, content, I'm, I'm just so grateful for. If you like what I'm doing here, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and click that little bell icon. It keeps you informed about any new things that I put up here on YouTube. And also, with everything happening here on YouTube, please make sure 
that you're following me on my other social media platforms that I engage in, like Twitter, where my Twitter handle is Carmelite Nick. You can also go over to Facebook and you can find my Facebook page at The Real Frank Fryer. Please make sure to follow these two things so you never miss out on all the different things that I'm doing. Thanks again. God bless. <laughs> Thank you.